Hey guys, it's Ann over at Plan Obsessed, and we're going to look in on the 55 gallon worm bin um, that we have affectionately called Blue. Um, it now has its own playlist, which I will link at the end. And um, I think that was per request. If you have any other requests for me to um, separate out things into different playlist uh, so you can look at them from the beginning to the end let me know. Uh, the lasagna bin now has its own DIY, Stacked has its own, the Euros have their own, the Red Wigglers have their own, the African Nightcrawlers have their own. Have any other ideas let me know. Alright well let's take a look on this. Uh, I did actually, it may look a little bit less right now, I went and sifted out about I don't know three or four gallons of castings out of this. I just skimmed everything off the top and then just put back all of the the items that were the overs. I can probably do a little bit more. So I'm going to sweep all the top stuff off to the side here and I'm going to put you down and then we're going to try and harvest a little bit more today. So a little, a little weirdness today. Put you down. There you go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this mortar tray and I'm going to use it to capture the stuff that I'm sifting. I'm using this particular uh, sifting pan, it's a good medium size. Cocoons will fall through this, um, but that's okay, um, beyond counting cocoons, I think, at this point. I believe that this is the one quarter inch uh, screen. It used to have a label on it, but that has long since gone. If you want to purchase the set that I have, um, I have a link below. This is the one next size smaller. I still think even some of the cocoons make it through this which is the eighth of an inch. And then I actually have a twelfth or a twentieth of an inch um, that I just use for soils and whatnot. But if I had to just buy uh, a few of them, because they are a little more expensive than they used to be, I would definitely get the one quarter inch and I would get the half inch. Um, that way, depending upon how fine you want your castings, if you're going to find, if you're going to sift through an eighth or a twelfth or a twentieth, um, you're going to be there all day, um, or I hope you don't have very many bins. But these are linked below. I've had these for over five years, and they are still clicking, no problems, easy to clean, etc. And I am an Amazon affiliate, so of course I do get a bit of a, a kickback or whatever you want to call it. Very small. So let's let's look at it here. And I'm just going to not go crazy sifting, but just enough to, to get the most of it off. So you can see the normal size worms are going to stay on top. <laughs> and you can see somehow some of the little isopods, the roller pulley bugs, they do make it through. So you know that the cocoons are going to make it through. And if it's this dry, it does sift very nicely. And you can tell that all of these things are just going to go right back. Trying to make a little bit of room in here. Um, I do have one of my friends that is donating waste now. And so um, I need to start some more bins, but I have not done it yet. So need to make some room in the bins that I do have for more stuff. And I know this isn't terribly interesting, but uh, one person did ask me if I could show this in real time. What am I doing? And I'm just moving back and forth. Um, and if it's wet, it will start balling up and having like pea-sized little balls. Now if you want to take a look at what I've got here, um, that's, that's what you've got. It's, it's not the finest castings on the planet. 
but it is what I am going for for my own use. Maybe if I was selling the castings or something, I would want to do them finer, but uh, for my purposes, this is good. Also, if you do more than about a handful at a time, it uh, is counterproductive because it all just sticks together. And when I get to the part where it is, um, and here I go, I grab more than a handful, and it, here it is going to be counterproductive. So you get to watch me go against my own idea and cause myself problems. So if you want to see what's on top, plastic there, but uh, sprouts, worms, mulch, leaves, So I also take my potted plants that are done, die, whatever you want to call it, uh, come to the end of their life, and I put them in my bins. So sometimes you will see things like crocs, crockery, or a little bit of, uh, I don't know, not sand, but not as big as a rock, grit, I don't know. So sometimes I have weird stuff in my bins. Most of the time I have weird stuff in my bins. But with this size, um, you can definitely capture your adult worms and they won't go through as long as you don't stop like I'm doing right now. If you stop for more than a second or so, they will crawl through that hole. When it's moving, they don't go through. But if you give it a second, they will wiggle their little butts right through it. I don't know, the worms have butts? So, looking at this, and you know, you can always leave this. Right now I'm in a hurry to make some space. You don't have to do this. Most people don't. Um, some people don't even sift at all, ever. Um, but I find that if I leave large bits like this, not to mention worms, in there, I have more of a problem with birds picking out my seeds and um, critters getting into my, uh, my pots or my garden, depending. And I don't know if it's because, you know, at this stage there is something left that they can sense to eat or whatever, I don't know. But I do sift for partially for that reason and as you can see right here here's a little cocoon um, of course I will save him and put him back in so I can go through here and look and rescue the cocoons so they don't end up outside or the the very very tiny worms um, but I generally don't but you can like I said you can and of course the white specks are my eggshells that didn't get ground up too much. But this just gives you an idea of what I do to finish my castings. And these will go and get tossed out into the garden. All right, I'm getting to the part over here where it is getting a little too wet to sift. Um, if it's too wet to sift, don't do it. I'm just telling you right now, you will just make your life miserable because what you have left in your overs is going to be um, little rocks that are going to be hard to, uh, to break up again. And then if you squish them, then you might be squishing eggs, you might be squishing baby worms. So it's better to just wait until it is dry enough to sift. I have been impatient. I've done it. I'll probably do it again, um, but just a piece of advice, unless you are absolutely, you know, in a uh, castings emergency, don't do it. So I'm going to move this down a little bit, move the castings forward, 
get down to that part where it's still dry. And I'll probably do a couple more shake shakes. And I probably have about a gallon here. So if you don't need things right away, right away, then you can wait. But yeah, I'm getting to the point now where it is not quite what it needs to be for sifting. So I'm going to stop before I make myself any more troubles. So you get to the part that's kind of like this. That's a little bit too wet to sift. So I'm not going to. But what I have here is probably a gallon or a gallon and a half of castings that I can toss out into my garden or keep or whatever. All right, now that we've done that, um, let's dive down and see what is in the food department. Oh, got a lot of got a lot of worms. Onion. <laughs> Onion full of worms. Oh, that smells like soup. Onion soup. It's weird. Sometimes because the food is decaying and being consumed at the same time by the creatures in the worm bin, it doesn't smell bad like a rotten onion would. It oftentimes will smell um, like cooked food because they're taking away all the stuff that has the bacteria and the stinkiness and leaving you with just, you know, whatever the food was that was previously cooked for, you know, for the most part. So let's see what else I've got in here. So that was a nice worm ball around that onion. What else have I got? So a lot of worms well distributed. That must be a piece of cheese. Because right now we're just going through, fluffing everything up, making room. So when I estimate how many worms I have in this bin, people have asked me. I have no real, no real idea. When I look and see the concentration um, right now, I would estimate it to be 10 pounds, give or take. I've taken the lids off. I didn't do it before the video. I just have taken them off because it is raining here and has been raining for days. And according to Weatherbug, not affiliated, uh, it's going to rain for the next two weeks here in Illinois. So <laughs> I figured I should take the lid off so that I don't end up with worm bins that are too wet. Too, you know, because they're in the basement. And uh, what? potato? I think that's a potato. They're in the basement, and so it doesn't really have uh, humidity control down here. But you can see I have a lot of worms. And this is just the compost mix. Um, you can see the telltale signs of the blue worms, the euros, and the red wigglers. Okay. I think we've gone through all the food over here. Kind of gathering it up in a pile so that we can put it with the new food. All right. I'm going to turn you around. And here's my pile of uneaten food. Here are the mango trees over here. One of them seems to not really be doing very well. One of them seems okay. And as I'm going through, you know, I'm assessing the condition of the bin. You know, the moisture, it's borderline getting to the part where I think it is, you know, could get too wet, especially with it going to be raining nonstop for a couple of weeks. Um, also looking to make sure there's no anaerobic parts, which it really could do. If it gets overly wet, you could find yourself with a bin that is mucky 
and uh, you could have problems very quickly. There's that shirt. Here's all the stuff that was part of the overs. That's a good size blue worm there. There should be a t-shirt or something in here. Should be more than that little scrap I just found. Aha. All right. I'll bring you a little closer. Yeah, I know some people are like, oh God, you don't wear gloves, it's so gross. Uh, I can wash my hands and I can't really feel what I'm doing if if I've got gloves on you know and if you like to wear gloves that's fine I'm not harassing you about that um, if the in the event that I had cuts on my hand or any kind of damage to my skin I would wear a glove to prevent any sort of whatever uh, and you've seen me wear gloves before um, and I've injured myself but right now, um, I think it's very therapeutic to just put my hands in the dirt, castings, whatever you want to call it. Um, to me, it's very th therapeutic to get in here and do this. You know, and the whole time I'm inspecting, looking at the quality of the castings, making sure there's no critters in here that shouldn't be making sure that they're consuming their food in a timely manner. Um, right now, they've definitely gone through just about everything. This is an onion for all the uh, worm onion haters. I didn't make them do this. They're doing it on their own. Once it degrades to a point where it doesn't bother them, they go eat it. You know, in the wild, nobody's, you know, helicopter parenting their... Uh, they're worms, you know. There's nobody out there going, oh no, those are onions, don't eat them, little wormies. Um, honestly, if it's something that they are capable of eating, they're going to eat it. If it's not, they won't. That is just the reality of, I mean, these creatures have been composting long before you and I have ever gotten involved with it. All right, I'm going to try and not disturb my little trees over here too much so I'm not going to go through that but I think it is fair to say that they have eaten almost all of their food so I feel pretty satisfied about the huge meal that I'm about ready to give them I thought out three bags from the freezer and I'm gonna dig myself a trench here put the older food in the bottom then maybe whatever drippings there is from the new food will make the old food more tantalizing. Or vice versa, you know, whatever the case may be. I think I'm going to need more room than that. Hold on. Let's maybe make that a little deeper. Okay. Let me grab the food. Alright, so this is what I'm planning on feeding today. Um, Yield melon, bananas, avocados, and at the bottom we have something weird here. Um, <laughs> those are mashed potatoes, and uh, I guess my my husband went to make mashed potatoes and he made the mashed potatoes, and as he was spooning them into, you know, not proper mashed potatoes made out of potatoes, but you know the faux ones that come in a box. Well, I guess it had been a while since he had made any, and there were little bugs in there, so. Um, his loss is the worm's gain. Let me grab some bedding. This is going to be very wet and I don't want things to get wetter than they are right now. Alright, so... I'm 
There we have it. They should make biodegradable banana stickers. All right, so there we go. I got a big old frozen hockey puck of uh, mashed potatoes and a bunch of melon, a couple bananas. So let's uh, give them a little bit more bedding on top and then we will bury it up. All right, well, I didn't have very much left, so it is what it is. All right, we're going to bury them up. And uh, if you haven't watched my channel before, uh, I do put the grit in with the bedding because I, I am ten, I'm forgetful. Let's just put it that way. And if it was up to me to remember to put grit in every time I put in new food, it wouldn't happen. <laughs> just keeping it real. All right, guys. Well, that is it for Blue today. If you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you are not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.